All right, welcome everyone to Military Guna TV, and today we have JD from IMAX It Football and a special guest, Mr. Rudolf Speed, with us to speak to us about future. This program is all about future, future perspective, what we want to do in the future, moving forward in the world of the Jamaican Football um, Federation, in that aspect of things. So, um, welcome to the show, Mr. Speed. Welcome to the show, um, JD. I'm glad to have you guys here. Um, could you please introduce yourself, Mr. Speed? Just a small introduction. Um, let the people the view know who you are and what you're about. Right. My name is Rudolf Speed. I'm the chairman of the JFF Technical and Development Committee. And um, basically, I'm the, the link um, with, to the board. So all matters technical come to my committee. Um, my committee would make the references or recommendations to the board and the board will vote to accept them or not to accept them. So basically that is my role. I am the link between the board that makes policies and the and the rest of the staff members that actually does the you know implement the policies. Okay, nice, nice. All right, so we have a few questions today we want to see and uh, um, I know have a few as well so um maybe i'll gi give jd to go ahead to start off with, yeah, the, with his first question um so jd um what's your first question um hello to everyone in the first place um thank you mr speed for actually speaking to us um i just have one thing to start with um is there any plans for the youth structure coming up assuming that you didn't have any fully um formed um youth setup because a, a few individuals on my show told me that you don't have any specific um youth setups for the youths to go and have a futuristic gain or information placed right so they couldn't be more wrong um and that is one of the reasons why I was brought in because of the work that I do with the youths, um, especially at my club. Um, in the last two years, we have sold six players, which they are record except for big clubs. And we have used basically teenagers to play the Premier League and finish third twice. So that is really one of the one of my things that I'm passionate about, developing up the youths. Yes. Um, so basically, I can tell you that we are in discussion with somebody from England, which I can't tell you their name yet for yeah, that's okay. them to come to Jamaica <laughs> with, with, with the next month or two, mainly because over the last two years, our, our youths have suffered in terms of not being able to develop properly. So yes. we are embarking on a program to recover all of those last time to see if our youths can catch up with the world. And we have, and we have even gone locally. We have gone um, to Europe, which is the top confederation in the world now, easily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, frighteningly, the top confederation that FIFA is worried about their dominance now, and we have gotten somebody from there, and we're just trying to iron out the pieces for them to come come over and and oversee that process to get back um, the youth where they should have been prior, you know, and improve at a higher rate to catch up the two years that we didn't um, improve in the pandemic. So that's one. But even before that, we had decided um, that we we're going to embark on a and uh, elite youth um, participation and competition. So we're going to sieve out the youth from under 13 and start to have elite youth competitions. Um, the pandemic slows down, so elite youth at the parish level for under 13 and 15, then we hand them over to the professional league at under 17 and under 20. But we went further. We use regulations to ensure that every Premier League club that is playing in the top league must have eight players who is 21 years 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 are under in the era. Mm -hmm. So we, we have established a clear player pathway. So if you wanted to become a professional player, or oh, we have the we established a grassroots program, you come to make your parish team in the under 13 and 15. After that, you should be good enough. So one of the professional clubs will pick you up and continue your education. Um, and that is the way you get into the into the um this the under 17 national team, the under 20 national team senior national team and into perfect. the Premier League team so that we have a clear party. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. And that will answer um, that's, and that's, 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 question. Exactly. And, 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 and honestly, I think that that is... Uh, that is how we should move going forward because we have to put these things in place. And I think that infrastructure and ground roots is actually the way going forward. This is how you develop the country itself and the, the football in the country. 
Um, my question, my first question for you is, you, do, you, do you have any idea of any form of infrastructure um, development plan putting in place? Well, the government won't help us. They are pathetic when it comes to infrastructure. I mean, um, they don't even understand why it's important for you to have that infrastructure in place, um, even for those health reasons, lower your hospital bill. So they are hopeless when it comes to that. But what we have done with the Premier League, we have ruled that the Premier teams, even those venues, are still not up to standard um, that you like to have. So what we have done is centralize the Premier League games now to the major stadium, um, Stadium Saban Park, Stadium East, and the JFF Technical Center, which you now we have the only all, all purpose football field, FIFA size, FIFA approved at the JFF Technical Center. There is a plan to build one more in, in Westmoreland because, as you know, the, the FIFA give us about like five million every four years, five million US, a little over five million every four years for that type of in, infrastructure work. So the JFF has actually, um, you know, put that money towards development of infrastructure for themselves. We're trying to build at least four in the country, um, synthetic pitch, FIFA approved. So at least those will be all weather. So at least our elite players will always have access to a field to play from morning till night. And we're trying to get lights on the one that we did at the university um, compound and, and seat in there. So that is the plan. I will hope that if, it, if, if the presidents that come along continue, every parish will probably All right. Okay, okay, uh, so the, and, 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 and that's a good answer. Um, so your other question, JD, then I'll bring my own. Okay, okay. Um, for instance, um, because this is connected to the reggae boys itself, the big uh, the big guys. Um, because we had this long um sets of um John situation, we know that gelling is a problem. Do we have any schedule um games to play? before any big competition like how much like and, and if we do need it because remember we have a lot of uk guys coming in and um we the time the time frame between is very sharp right so um i must tell you that um chemistry is probably mm -hmm. overrated if you know <laughs> when the when the chelsea coach came, came. <laughs> when the chelsea coach came he went on a 14 match winning streak. There was no chemistry. A lot of the players that were thrown away by Frank Lampard, he brought them back. In this day and age, the, the one top, the 10,000 hours rule don't even work so much because you can plagiarize anything and you can teach people to play stuff with a couple of training session um, to, to play a different, totally different system. You, you are seeing happening Barcelona change your system, everybody changes them. So in this new world, um, you don't need so much of that. If you have professional players, they would have been versed in the art of playing every system, every formation that you can think about. With technology you now, people can tell you where to run, where not to run, all of those things. So I think, yes, we might be a little bit behind, but we are not, we are not far away. And as to the specific problem of gelling, which there's still, I'm saying there's still some credence to it, we do have the Gold Cup coming up. So it depends on what we do with those matches. If there are preparation for the World Cup qualifier, we could use them like that. Also, of our window in June, which we will get games. There will be games in the window of June. So, minimum is at least that's five games. I think that's good enough to get ready. Maximum, mm -hmm. if we go to where we're heading to, then you'll get the additional games, um, additional three games. Perfect, okay. because that's what I told people here. Because obviously, I'm 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 talking from the side in Belgium. I'm saying what these guys do in Europe. They have moved uh, so early in their career, from seven to to thirteen years old. Um, gelling process ain't really a thing, and people really came at me. So for you to say the same thing, you just validate my point. So thank you for that one. <laughs> All right, that, that, well, they don't understand. I mean, we all pretend like we know football, but we really don't. Um, but you know, we just have to keep educating everyone. Yeah, and we're never too old to learn. We're definitely never too old to, um, old to learn. So, um, but my yeah. question now: Well, I am one yeah. person who will really admit that I thought I knew I knew football too, and I only started to know football about two years ago. I'm first to admit. I mean, <laughs> till, until uh, we started to do some different courses and start to get exposed to certain people, then I start to understand the sports much better. So it's a learning process. So nobody don't take it 
author author contents is actually yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um so um my question now is since we're we have sorted out things with the JFF, we know what the, the direction is going forward with the reggae boys as well. What I want to know now is for the Premier League, now the Jamaican Premier League, what are the, the things put in place for the restart and how does the restart look um, according to the red, ambigo and green from the government to start the restart of the, 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 the Jamaican Premier League? Well, I mean, a lot of people don't know, but we have revamped our Premier League structure um, totally. If you notice, there's a new different management structure in place. We have a different chairman who is independent. Um, that was one of the ways that we thought we should restructure Jamaica football. We have four independent chair, uh, four independent directors, and then we have the 12 club who, who give us one director. Before, it was always only 12 club directors, and we thought that the personalities and the self-interest was one of the things dragging on the product for 47 years. So we changed all of that this year, and we have garnered so far between three to four times the amount of sponsorship that we would have gotten on average over the last 10 years. So that was, so the Premier League um, by itself grouping is ready to play. Um, we have the sponsorship. All the, we are, you know, we have the players, we have all our systems, we have all our rules, everything ready to play. We're just waiting on the government to, to make it necessary to give us the green light. And so far, we are just scratching our head and wondering what is happening because the rest of the world has started to play football again and our government adamant that we are not going to play. Even when we tell them that, listen, we will play in a bubble, we'll, we'll foot the bill, and we have pointed out how effectively we can do it and we're still not getting any answers for it. I mean, it's a big frustration on the island, not just for football, for, but for athletics. And I can't help feeling that um, the government knows something that we don't know because clearly the rest of the world, they know something that the rest of the world don't know because clearly um, we're just frustrated now. Um, not just football, every single sport. And I can see us for the next year or two when somebody run 9.99 and come fourth, they're probably on the winner around 9.96. We're going to say, well, if it wasn't for the government, we would have won that goal. And I can see us frustrated yeah. the same thing in football. Um, and I think they should be pinned somehow. This what I just said should be pinned on them for, for the next 10 years. Because you know what they are doing don't make any sense. I mean, nobody else is doing it. People who have COVID to come into their years 10 times more than us, they are playing the sport. People who are poorer than us playing, people who are richer than, than us playing. I don't understand what government is doing. They, and they don't understand themselves either. And that's where we are. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So um, that was one of the questions that I wanted to ask about the sports world because if we're going to do a restart, I think it is critical because right around the world, the big European... Um, um, countries are doing it the, the even the smaller countries are doing it they're doing a sports bubble thing that they emphasize and using that as the guidance to moving forward in start restart of the football and any sporting uh, industries but no, not true. Um, since most, that, people, yeah. most people are not using the bubble situation they do frequent testing they test every week but they're not using the bubble so okay. we are gone we are we the bubble was was initially the bubble was fashionable like last year the bubble is not fashionable this year People are people understand the, the virus now. Um, there's no no there's no evidence that says that sports people are giving each other coronavirus. As a matter of fact, all the evidence point to when the persons go home and get it from somebody else. So the truth yeah. is, there's no no evidence to stop playing sports. As a matter of fact, it helps because everybody lung is better, so it, it's easier <laughs> for you to recover or not to suffer. Get sick and die. And, and there's no oh, okay. downside to playing sports. And I mean, we could say, let us play in the sun all the time. That, that would be a compromise. So, you know, the sun does help a little. Yeah. But um, even though we want to play in a bubble and we're just not hearing anything. I mean, at least who's running in different lanes can't get to have a, have a meet. It, it's a frustrating one. All the sports people in Jamaica, really frustrating. Um, so right now, we think the government is the one who is in there in the development of sports right now. And they making us fall behind everybody else in the world. Okay, okay, that's per that's perfect then. So um if you said um all that you said before that the government really damaging the, the entire thing, would they give you a pass like for the national team 
to play home games or or you think that you are going to play the home games away because I think that 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 will really do a bad um, disservice to the team itself. Because I I thought every time Jamaica plays at home, they have a big ad advantage. So let me know what you what are your thoughts on that? Well, the truth is, we they give us permission to have training camps. You know, two weeks, two weeks. So we're grateful for that. Um, if they are going to give us permission to play at home, we don't know. We just have to hope that the the the, the seat as a the the seat as important. Um, in, in the scheme of things to, to give us that permission, we don't know because they have not given permission for competitions. They have given the athletes permission to the time trials because, you know, to run in the Olympics, etc., you have to have certain times. Yes. So they have given the athletes that. But but competition, they have, they have not approved any competition in, in any sport, as far as I know. Oh my God. So you might be right. We may, be able to, we may have to ask somebody to play the game at their venue, if, you know. But, but at this stage, I could never tell you what they are planning to do. I have uh, had no clue of what they are likely to do. <laughs> wow. That's definitely not nice because that means you're giving up your advantage um, of your feel and pitch and know, know how and stuff. But um, that's a part of the game. It's only, it mm -hmm. only made it a little bit difficult. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm confident I will do well, though, you know, with the influx of overseas based players and um they as i said those players are top professionals they would have gone through every system i can think about that is why i'm not so worried um if we're trying to use a lot of local based players then we probably been problems because no training no competition etc you know because portmore united and waterhouse had to withdraw from the Concacaf championship because of the same thing they're not able to train you know so they they thought why waste so much money i, I suppose and go and get butter and get you know the ten love them, you know so it was a prudent decision from them they had no choice but to withdraw but all of this as i said before is really the government is putting us in this position because they just don't understand what is happening with sports you know so that's where we are okay that's well said my brother definitely um uh, but you answered some of my points that i even had on the paper without you knowing i had it on the paper <laughs> right. That's okay. so, I work um, in the media for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, um, moving <laughs> forward now, I'm, I'm looking at things. I'm, I'm going to go a bit further because sure. I believe that if, the, if there's no concrete time spot for Premier League to start, as you said, there's a strong possible start that even the World Cup qualifiers might be end up um, playing in, at those, the home, or own home fixtures, maybe playing in those, those places like Mexico and the USA. That's a like well, this, you know. yeah, well, well, not Mexico because <laughs> that's kind of far. But um, I believe that you're correct. We, we, that is a possibility, but I don't want to even start thinking about it yet. I want to just leave okay. it out totally and do it because <laughs> that would be catastrophic <laughs> for us. All right. Um, so um, basically, we covered a lot. Um, we don't want. I know you got, you have a, a long day ahead of you. We don't want to go any further, yeah. but thank you very much for coming on to the show. We do respect that the insight that you gave us. You opened a lot of pages to many of the questions that um, have been asked. So I think that it's now for people to read those um, um, fine prints and they will get a better understanding rather than coming up with their own con um, con concise um, ideas of what is happening. So thank you, Mr. Speed, for coming on. Also, thank you, um, Mr. JD, for coming on as well. And I appreciate that you guys are here today. Thank you all. And this has been a good one. You're welcome, and everybody keep safe. See you soon. Yes. Uh, All right. bye -bye.